pure freaking electrolytes on any diet. It's because it's really important. But right now I'm waiting for you guys to join the chat in my RV. You guys know that I moved to Texas from California. So let's get, let's get it. Let's get this. All right. So. Oh boy. People ask me a lot of questions about electrolytes, about the thyroid, about vegetables, cruciferous vegetables. And, um, you know, I got my little cowboy gear going on here. Just, you know, because I got a horse. What's up first? Okay, let's hit this. Now, do you guys, I'll adopt you. Oh yeah, I'll adopt you. Okay. The problem is I need to get some air on me because it's still hot in Texas. <laughs> All right, today I want to talk to you about the thyroid because a lot of people don't understand what's going on with the thyroid and a lot of women are afraid to do keto because they think that they'll have a thyroid flare up. Now some people will and I typically don't talk directly about the thyroid because I don't want to turn men off, but guess what men, you guys can have thyroid issues too. Now the thyroid is a gland that's the butterfly shape gland that sits on the front of your throat and it produces thyroid hormone. Now these hormones are very important. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, you got a goiter. Okay, so mom, that's right, mom saying that she got a goiter when she did keto. The thing is, is that if you are getting developing goiters, you probably had a propensity to not be able to absorb iodine into your diet way before trying to do keto. And then people will shove these goitrogenic foods into their body. And if they're shoving goitrogenic foods, then the like broccoli, the cruciferous vegetables, that's broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, asparagus, even kale, which I don't like because it's very goitrogenic. And uh, oh, thank you, Elephant Queen. Um, people who are trying to do any diet, they'll come with, uh, you know, sub subclinical thyroid function. Not even same thing with the gallbladder. Not even know it. Do these diets. Everything's exacer exacerbated and things get worse. I was eating green smoothies every day and a shite ton of almonds. Not good. Super high oxalate, but I'll go more into oxalates after I get done talking about the issues with your thyroid and also with electrolytes. Because they kind of go hand in hand a little bit. We need iodine. Now the recommendations, here's what I find very precarious. People talk about potassium. They're saying that you need 4,700 milligrams of potassium. If you do the math, you can't get that in food without literally overdoing food. Uh, and that's not normal. It's just not normal in nature. When I work with clients, uh, or hi Emma, I work with a lot of clients almost every day and then we'll go over the supplements that people take. I really should have just titled it like, what supplements do you take? But I think I'll actually go more into that the next one. Exactly, Scott. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Um, yes, 4,700 milligrams of potassium probably mm -hmm. might do some damage. Um, I hate that I'm, I'm using my phone, so I'm getting notifications. Um, having 4,700 milligrams, so I told you guys before you break that down. So if a bowl of spinach is about... Oh, well, let's Google it, right? Let's see how much spinach is in a in a um, bowl. And it's it's inaccurate because I didn't say cup. So let's start with a cup, right? And then we'll factor like four, four cups in spinach. So let's see what we got here. Actually, do like this. I'll up, open up a new window. Here we go. Okay, uh, I was just curious about the cup because I don't remember. So it's, they say that it's 
540 milligrams of potassium in a cup of spinach. So you're going to need roughly, well, two cups is going to be around a thousand and then we're going to have two and four and six. So we're, we're going to have like eight cups of spinach to get our 4,700 milligrams of potassium. Now, if you're doing eight cups of spinach, you're going to have severe oxalate issues. And I mean, these are facts. I used to eat so much spinach and develop small crystals from oxalates in my kidneys. It's a bad look. Okay, let's get to the thyroid. So the thyroid is going to regulate a lot of stuff. It's going to regulate your temperature. So women typically, well, there's two reasons why women are cold. Uh, one is because simply we have clamps that shut off blood circulation to the extremities and men don't. They have a constant flow of blood all the way to their fingertips and all the way, all the way to their toes unless they have a thyroid problem. So men who are cold, I'm always like, uh-oh, we need to consider your thyroid. So uh, basically, but with women, there's a couple reasons why women get cold very easily, but unfortunately in today's time as modern humans, women typically become cold because they're not getting enough circulation to the extremities, not because they're having a baby, right? Because you want to shunt blood to the core area and develop, to be able to keep the baby warm. A lot of people have cold extremities because their T3 is just low. They become hypo, low thyroid hormone. And that's typically the problem. Or they have too much TPO, not TPO anti antibodies, but they have too much binding globulins which will bind on proteins that will uh, bind to the thyroid hormone and rob it and then it can't get into the cell or it's just not getting into the cells. But it comes from stress, it comes from not getting the right nutrition. Uh, so basically a lot of you guys, oh also from things like estrogen dominance, adrenal fatigue, skipping meals, intermittent fasting, not getting sleep, stress, cortisol you know, your, your garden variety, leaky gut, we're not absorbing your minerals. So you're going to need vitamin D for that thyroid. You're going to need iodine for the thyroid. You're going to need vitamin C. You're going to need zinc, copper balance. I don't need supplements either, like liver, like oyster meat, oyster extract. Uh, yes. The conversation about the thyroid is so whack because uh, I just think that the supplement industry and the pharmaceutical industry on the thyroid is absolute garbage. Basically you're going to have to use more and it doesn't really, the thyroid like thyrox, level thyroxin and synthroid, they don't actually really work well. A lot of uh, practitioners will just test to see if you have that you know, sublingual, you know, pharmaceutical thyroid T3 in, um, in your bloodstream. What, what, what kind of oyster extract do you like? Oh, do I like, um, I'm not taking oyster, oyster extract, so I'm just doing seaweed. But for those who really have problems, then they might go and do that whole Amazon search and find the right, um, now I should have gone live on, um, Streamyards, so I can go and pull up some Amazon and, and see what um, iodine that people five star the most. But I digress. It is 81 degrees in my RV. 81. Okay. So the thyroid, the problem with the thyroid, and we'll talk about keto and thyroid, and then we're going to talk about electrolytes, then I'm going to bounce. First, I'm going to drink some water. Okay. Uh, I used to love Nori, but you can't now, huh, Scott? Um, is this the right Scott, too? The one I just had a consultation with. I got to respond to your email, by the way. I, yes. I sh I'm going to respond before I go to bed, I promise. The problem is, is that people have a lot of cortisol. Now, 
cortisol will rob from hormones. If you have too much of it, this is a problem. Cortisol is meant to break down amino acids and raise your blood sugar, right? It's meant to wake you up. But if you are in an inflammatory state and it begins to rob from tissues that are trying to serve, like thrive, right? So if you're going into gluconeogenesis and you're breaking down tissue, amino acids, and your immune system drops, then the thyroid is like, we need to slow you down. And this is what the, this is the reason why a lot of people de develop thyroid issues. The body's trying to slow you down, but you don't slow down. You just dump coffee down your throat, which is masking the fact that you're tired, possibly from either the adrenal insufficiencies or you're tired because of your thyroid's frack. And if your thyroid is struggling with getting thyroid hormone into the cell for whatever reason, um, or to, to make thyroid hormone, uh, then it's really, 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 really important that you look into the symptomology and see where do I align? What's going on with my lifestyle? Am I getting all those vitamins in? Don't take multivitamins. They are chemically processed. They're not using, I was saying in a consultation, I think, was it yesterday? Today, yesterday? Yesterday, yesterday, okay. That, for example, if you need uh, K2 and you need vitamin A and you need K2, vitamin A, and vitamin D, so let me turn this off until I need to turn it on. Um, people will go and uh, we had a conversation yesterday. Okay, yeah, it is the right Scott. So okay, Scott, yeah, I've got to answer your email. It's just been, you know, it's just nonstop. I get distracted because I've got two horses and a donkey, and I just moved. And I have the couple that I live with that are sometimes at odds with each other. So I'm kind of being like the therapist. So. That's why I wanted to go live yesterday, but I just couldn't. Uh, Hottie Lux says, facts I developed last year, very bad side effects from uh, cert centrum major joint pain. Uh, what do you mean? Is that a product? Are you saying? So they always say that supplements are expensive pee, but the problem is this. When you're taking... Um, iodine in a tincture form, or you're taking vitamin D, this is just pure vitamin D or vitamin whatever. And that's the problem because that's a lot of concentration of that vitamin that is synthetic. That's what I thought, Centrum, the multivitamin supplement. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. So uh, Hadi Lux says that uh, she developed joint pain from that supplement. I try to explain to people. First of all, you're taking in keratin, which is vitamin A, but it's, your body has a very difficult time to, to produce and to convert it into retinol, which is the usable form of vitamin A. And so they're like trying to get their A in and then it's just super toxifying their liver and their kidneys and the whole biliary duct system. Whereas if you have it from food, your body understands nature, right? Your body totally understands that um, if I'm going to eat liver, for example, I have to get through the amino acids. I have to get through the fatty acids. I've got to get through connective tissue, the membrane to get to, let's say, the vitamin A or the selenium, the zinc, um, the vitamin C. And your body has to go through a digestive process. And it's a, it's a big, huge digestive job to break down liver. But if I take it in supplement form and it's, or if it's pure, you know, vitamin D, then that's a big, huge load on the liver and kidneys, especially when it's synthetic. And then it is a kind of, um, I've had two clients develop kidney damage from vitamin D supplements facts yeah 
that's not everyone, but doctors will prescribe like 50,000 IUs, 20,000, 10,000. It's too much. It's a burden. So you want to start looking at things like cod. Now, if we're talking about iodine, iodine is very toxic too. It's, it's toxic. Iodine tincture in, in, the, in the drops, so toxic. Potassium iodide, all of that super toxic. Now, you want to use things like anything from the sea. We've got, I mean, look, I don't like for people to eat shrimp that much, but if you're trying to get your iodine in, We've got your kelp, we've got your seaweed, we've got your shrimp, we've got the tuna. This isn't stuff you'd eat all the time because tuna obviously has mercury in it. Um, eggs have a, a fair amount of iodine. Kefir, raw kefir, that has got, that's got iodine in it. Um, so those are the major ones. Shrimp, fish, seaweed, eggs, kefir, stuff like that. Okay um oh oyster oyster extracts the best oysters are such a bomb 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 amount of iodine for those who don't have a histamine response because the sea when anytime you take the sea if it's not fresh if bacteria grows on it, a lot of people have a histamine reaction to it uh i've just been doing your frozen liver pills exactly how do you feel about the hef liver someone never heard of them Liver supplements are, they're aged. I mean, you're not going to get the nutrients like in, in, in meat, especially the fresher the meat, like from farms and local farms. If you guys are having issues with the thyroid, you're having issues with uh, getting the right nutrients for certain, uh, certain systems, certain hormones. Uh, okay. I was like, half? Hey, what the heck is that? Um... Uh, but no, I mean, if you, if it's better than nothing, but if you guys have health issues or if you got severe histamine, well, no, there's people have more of a histamine response from the capsules rather than just the fresh, fresh meat anyway, because it's been hung, hung for, you know, a week, 10 days and bacteria is growing on it to drain the blood out. Okay. The thyroid. Uh, the thyroid, uh, people ask a lot about ancestral. I really need to get on ancestral. I haven't really talked about them because I haven't gotten paid. Um, facts. I mean, I'm just going to keep it real. You know, they haven't sent me a check and I'm just like, yo, you want me to push your product, but like handle, handle your, your people, like, you know, get it cracking. So I got to get on them now. Um, because I think that the ancestral products are great. They're expensive, but they're, they're awesome. Now, uh, what about dehydrated my, my own liver? I mean, it's okay to use a dehydrator, but I'd still consume it pretty quick. I wouldn't like just let it just sit on a counter, even though bacteria isn't really going to grow on dehydrated, but if you're, you're still not getting all that, you know, the iron and and other minerals that you would get if it's just fresh meat. But yeah, I mean, you could dehydrate it. It's a real pain in the butt to do that. People with thyroid are questioning, should they do carnivore to avoid the goitrogenic effect with vegetables? Anyone have any luck with colostrum for healthy? Oh yeah, we should have talked about that, Scott. Um, Scott, it's a 50-50 gamble. It's one of those N equals one experiments we got to do because a lot of people react to colostrum. I do really well with colostrum. So you could just, just try. That's all you can do is try it. It's really good to heal, heal the, here's the thing. There are so many foods that help heal the gut and then make the gut worse if you're reacting to them with histamine, which is an, which is an inflammatory reaction. Sometimes you have to baby step yourself into stuff that works. What's the difference between that and capsules? You mean real meat? because all the nutrients are like in it once you dehydrate it, it down it downgrades immediately it's the same thing with fish oil as soon as you take a fish and you put it in a capsule and it just starts to to downgrade instantly oxidize uh now goitrogenic foods so goitrogens uh goitrogenic foods are typically from the cruciferous vegetables that i prescribe on a ketogenic diet so that's your broccoli your cauliflower your cabbage your asparagus all of those. So people who've already, they know that they're having thyroid symptoms or they actually know that they're diagnosed with hypothyroid or Hashi's, 
then um, you got to be really careful with those cruciferous vegetables. You can have them, but they got to be cooked. And I wouldn't do a lot. So I would, if I had severe thyroid problems and I knew that I was having a goitrogenic effect and not absorbing my iodine very well because of the vegetables, then I would have them probably a half a cup every other day. That's for people who have a goitrogenic effect. And it's not common, but there are people who eat uh, cruciferous vegetables and they can't get in the iodine. Why is that the other brand you suggest good? Isn't that what they do? Dehydrate the meat? What you what you talking about, Willis? Terry <laughs> Nut. Is it? Nutting? I don't know what you mean. You have to like refresh me. You say you say you stay fine. I like that hat. It's sexy. Well, see, I am a cowgirl now. Y'all know we got some horses up in here, and I do live in Texas. Yes. Okay liver capsules what is that brand what brand what ancestral i don't know what you mean you gotta like rephrase it okay um what about dehydrating my own liver okay with that stuff do you still like the ancestral products okay i cut all that all right back to the goitrogenic foods you guys we don't need a lot of vegetables now the good experience i have with carnivore was realizing that the amount of what's up chastity um uh, james there's a fly flutter on my face i can't with it in dry climates we don't get flies that easily i could have my balcony door open but i digress okay uh, for those trying to do keto, or, okay, here's here's a very fine line, which I should do a complete separate video on. There's a fine line between being full carnivore and not really needing a lot of vegetables because vegetables have obviously a lot of anti nutrients in them. And you're in North, I'm in North Louisiana, but I'll be in South Louisiana soon. So with the humidity. When it comes to how much, for people who've got histamine intolerance, like Scott E, he's got it really bad. We had a consultation the day before yesterday, or yesterday, sorry, we had yesterday, and he's got it bad. So Scott really needs to work on the cortisol, the stress. I need to get my fly zapper. I cannot with this fly flying around my head. I cannot. So if you guys hold on one second, I'm going to get my fly zapper and we're going to hear that fly get electrified. One sec. I am right here. So hold on, my people. Hold on, my people. It is time to fly zapper. Stephanie's going to get jiggy with this right now. Okay. I'm tired of this fly. Okay. All right, solid. Solid as a rock. All right, here we go. I know flies are crazy this year. How much vitamin D in, is in a fly? I don't know, Lori, you tell me. Maybe none. Um, okay. The goitrogenic effect, it is real. People do develop a goiter. Uh, unfortunately, cruciferous vegetables in certain people, not everybody, uh, block iodine, <laughs> I know Scott, um, block iodine from getting into the thyroid gland. So it's something that we have to consider now. Um, I'm going to, you know what, Scott, I'm going to answer your email right now since you're, you're watching me. Hi Steph. Sorry. Random question. Are you omega six from meat like pork? I uh, don't worry about that. Do not worry about the omega six from pork. Cause guess what? You don't just have polyunsaturated fats in pork. You also have mono. Oh, it got it. Yes! Zap that mother sucker. Did you guys hear that? Got that fly. Mm, mm. All right. Let me see Scott's email. We're going to answer right on the spot. All right. Where is Scott? Okay, here it is. Interview request. He wants to interview me, and then I'm going to interview him. Tuesday Zoom chat interview. Yes, I am because I'm in Central Coast time, so I would probably be available on Tuesday. Scott, I have a consultation in the morning. Hmm. Can you do a Monday? 
Scott, can you do Monday? Monday would be a lot better, I think. Morning time. Let me know. Because you're in Florida. Florida. Okay. I'm going to reply right now to Scott. All right, hold on, guys. Um, thanks for clearing up that for me. Okay, you're welcome. A ghee on everything. Yes, and we just got to make sure, Scott, that you're not reacting to ghee. So we should do a little experiment with, like, an olive oil and a coconut oil for a couple of days. And then bring the ghee back and see if you react. Mm -mm. Okay. You need a zapper like that. <laughs> yeah, that one I got is good. Like I'll just I'll, I'll have poor flies in here and I'll come back in after an hour and they're all dead. Yes. No, not poor fly, honey. Mm -mm. Poor Stephanie. All right. How's the donkey? She'll let me pet her a little bit. Next live I'll do is it'll be me trying to train. I should do a training my horses video. Maybe I should start a horse channel. But I digress. Lulu. Her actual full name is Lukia. And I call her Lulu. So it's Lukia and Luca. But Lulu for short. Okay. Now, um, we got the thyroid. Thyroid also. Uh, thank you, Roberto. The thyroid also really gets compromised with stress. And when people don't slow down, the thyroid will downregulate the hormone to slow you down, right? You'll feel more tired, start gaining weight, feeling thick, sluggish, adrenal. And you just go, okay, I'll just drink coffee or I'll take a five hour energy drink. And that's when people start to develop full on Hashi's hyper hypothyroidism. And you don't want to go there. Do not listen to any endocrinologist say that you have to be on hypothyroid medication for the rest of your life because that is absolutely a lie. Okay? You can get off your thyroid medication and fare really, really well without it. Get that cortisol down. Connect to circadian rhythm with sleep and diet and everything. Lifestyle. Why I have headaches when I eat the curry gold butter. Because, Tony, you're having a histamine response to it. Get rid of the curry gold butter. It's sort of an allergy to it. So you might want to do what Scott's doing and try a ghee. And see if that will help. And if not, then you'd have to go off butter completely. Let's talk about the electrolytes as I drink some water. A lot of you guys doing these low-carb diets are super. And I mean duper dehydrated and you don't know it and the reason why you don't know it is because you don't know how to listen to your body with a new ear everyone's like i listen to my body and i'm like oh you better tell your ear to go put another one you better screw on another ear because that one's telling you the wrong news it's really important that you get magnesium calcium is the last one you need and we gotta we gotta be careful for people who've got a high calcium score to not go and run and get some more calcium supplements because you might be uh, a really high storing producer of calcium. And those people are, there are some people like that. So for example, my horse, right? My horse is eating alfalfa. So sometimes it can be high in protein and calcium. That's not good if you got rocks floating around the arteries. Now, if you do need calcium, which you do for your bones, some people have osteoporosis, going to need some of that calcium. Some of you intermittent fasters, you runners are probably definitely going to have to get some calcium because you have dipped into your bones to get calcium when you're not getting enough through your diet. And some people just develop osteoporosis too early, too young. And that's a problem. It's a problem. So you so fiends in menace some frogger may va for your potas fenska eat live stream at Forgot your body's failure. Anyway, I'm going to get back to it because y'all know I lived in Sweden. So anybody who's in Sweden, Denmark, and Norway, Shanna, who do they get? All right, let's keep going. 
Um, magnesium. They be all kind of magnesiums, right? Let's get to the list. We need magnesium, right? Magnesium is going to help calcium to be absorbed and vitamin D absorbed into your body, which we need for your arteries, your muscles, your nerve endings, your lungs, you, 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 your sex hormones. You need them. Uh, what kind of foods that, that have, uh, or no, what types of magnesium? Now I wanted to get back to mm, thyroid. No, no, let's get back to the types of magnesium. Why well, have headaches when I eat Kirgil? Okay. What company do you recommend for electrolytes? I don't Tony. That's the thing. Don't go to a company. Let's try to get this from food first, right? Let's not go and pad the pockets of eat people just going to give you a bunch of chlorides that irritate the kidneys. Don't do the electrolyte products. They're just literally garbage. I mean, the cocktails, the, the multi. Um, so um, let's go to the list of, of magnesium. Something was on the Swedish bikini team, but why, but why is there isn't keto? No, that is not true, you guys. I was not on any Swedish bikini team. Mm -mm. I really like magnesium. Theanate. Uh, Theanate. The 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 is that okay? So that's more for the brain, I think. The best kind of magnesium is magnesium glycinate. It's it's more highly absorbable than the other types, which I want to go through. Hold on, let me find it. We've got magnesium citrate. Citrate, without looking at the screen, I can rattle off. See if I can remember, remember them all. Citrate, malate, glycinate, bicarbonate, chloride, oxide, citrate what did i miss okay there's taurate l3 and 8 3 and 8 i knew you're spelling it wrong 3 3 and 8 and sulfate and so the two and lactate so the one that is the most absorbable is glycinate now some people have histamine response to it so then they can take malate which people really react less to citrate's really great because it's really affecting the smooth muscle of your bowels but Magnesium is really great for all kind of stuff, right? You know, it has, it absorbs the vitamin D. It also absorbs the calcium. It also affects your heart, central nervous system, hormones, all kind of stuff. When people get headaches and migraines, typically, uh, if it's not a histamine issue, they can um, regulate those uh, migraines with uh, magnesium. Now, how much water? You want to drink two liters of water a day if you are shorty like me, a petite girl. Two liters of water a day. And then um, guys who are big on a sweaty day, like three. But when you get up to a gallon, yo, that's way too much water. How much magnesium do you suggest to take? Oh, throw 400 milligrams starting at for a glycinate. Citrate, you only need about 150, 150 to 200. No, no element, no element. What is it? Re relight electrolytes starting to use them. No, don't. Yeah, you want to get your potassium from food, right? And you want to try to get your calcium from food like eggshells or fishbone calcium or like, what is it? Some of the calcium, bok choy has calcium. Broccoli has calcium. Shrimp has calcium. Kefir has calcium in it. Collard greens. Hmm. We don't have to go and use supplements. Supplements are just man-made nonsense. Y'all know that I don't like chemicals in the body. Okay? Not now. Not ever. Not if you don't have to. Okay. I got bit by two fire ants and my my arm is so swollen and it's itching. It's so swollen. That's why I'm using this band is to cover the swelling. It's just all oh, itching me. They got me good. Okay. 
you need two liters of water. You need 400 milligrams of, of magnesium at night. Some people go up to 800. This depends on the individual. Citrates, be careful. They make your stool loose. Um, you need, uh, they said here that you need a thousand milligrams of calcium a day. Are you insane? For example, eight ounces of collard greens is 360. Uh, that's okay. But eight ounces, I like for people to do four, but you could do eight ounces, eight ounces of broccoli, sardines, three ounces of broccoli have 325 milligrams of uh, calcium. That's pretty good. Do you have ice out there? Uh, in my freezer. Mm. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay. I'm going to answer you guys' questions and relax. Because you guys know I get exhausted. I'm going and I'm going and I'm going and I'm going. Supplements are just man-made nonsense. This is one of the reasons I've listened to stuff for years. Y'all, thank you so much, Lane. Lane is correct because the binders, the fillers, uh, the chemicals that they use, uh, not good. The kidney issues, not good. If we can avoid man-made nonsense, let's try to get it from food. The only thing that's really difficult is magnesium. That's the one where I'm like, yeah, supplement might help. Let's see what you guys got to say here. Let's see here. So Scott says you can't eat nori sheets, which is the seaweed for the iodine. So a lot of people cannot do seaweed for the thyroid. They just can't. Now I can. I am so like I get. I have histamine. I'm having a histamine response on my arm. That's histamine. That's swollen hair. That's histamine. I'm reacting to bug bites, and I didn't when I was a kid. So I know that's histamine, right? Uh, but with food, I seem to be pretty good. Now I get a little bloated on certain foods, but most foods, like I can eat seafood, not a problem. I can do butter. I can do, what else is high histamine? High histamine foods, spinach, but I don't eat spinach. Uh, butter, eggs, I can eat eggs. Uh, I can eat aged meats. I can eat bacon. I'm fine. I'm very lucky. Can you give examples of histamine responses? Yes, Marianne. Uh, why can't you recommend products and link them below? Uh, Terry, because we're talking about people's health. I don't want anybody to take a product that people have a reaction to. And then people go, Steph told me to take this product, like, oh, uh, take some, this brand of potassium citrate. And then they go and take it and then they get really sick. So I just stop kind of recommending brands. I just don't want to deal with the headache of people having issues. And they do trust. I do consultation. Ask Scott. Scott will tell you. I'm very careful with my clients. By the way, you guys, you know I do consultations, so you can book a consultation. My Instagram is Steph Funny Ketogenic, and I'll put that in the show notes below after the live stream. And my Facebook is Stephanie, the business person. And if you guys have things you want me to talk about, just put in the show notes below. Uh, so first, I'm going to answer the question about histamine. Histamine is swelling. It can be, I'm having a histamine response on my arm right now. I take this off oh, and it itches like a biatch. So there you see that, that's histamine right there. That's the best example of histamine. That's histamine. And I got one on my wrist here on my thumb. Boom, 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 got me three times, but that's histamine. It's when your body swells. So the good news is, is that now my body is trying to repair itself from this fire ant bite and it just has to swell up to do the job. It's a weird mechanism, but it works. Mother nature is really awesome. It's also mucus, headaches, 
heart palps, um, joint pain, uh, rashes, bumps, red spots, broken blood vessels around the nose. Um, histamine can be feeling tired, uh, stomach aches, uh, diarrhea. Those are all histamine responses. There's more, but I can't think right now. Just add a disclaimer. That's not enough, Terry. Uh, -uh. nope. I might do that in the future, but mm -hmm. it's better to do like an Amazon store or something like that. And then I could capitalize it on like everybody else does. Cause I don't make any money doing this kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, random. I know. What is your opinion on hot spices? Horrible for the thyroid. Cayenne peppers, pepper, black pepper, cayenne really bad. And Laura, you're a woman. Be very careful. Remember, plants can be good and they can frack you up. They can be really horrible to block that iodine, the nightshades. Uh, I had three cups of coffee the other day and I felt like a crackhead. <laughs> Hello, body was shaking. I couldn't sleep. Eyes were blurring with pressure. Head was pounding. Never again. Thank you, Hottie Lux. Yeah, I mean, when I I am so sensitive to any like man-made yuck junk yunk that when I drove here and I would drove 15 hours straight. The, I drove two nights with no sleep. I wanted to make it here to Texas before thunder made it. So I had literally two sips of coffee and I was lit. I was like, yo, you put a, a sip of alcohol in me and I am going to be full up. Yep. Uh, oh, I love spicy food. Hot. Damn. I know we're learning. You're from Savannah. Savannah Slamma. There used to be a skateboard. You guys know, you guys know I used to be a pro skater. So they used to have a skate thing called Savannah Slamma. Okay, guys. Don't forget to like up the stream. I don't check to see who's liking. There's 41 people in the chat and only 26 likes. I hate to be a used car salesman, but it's time that people found stuff. And I love all the people out there, but they give you a lot of bad information like intermittent fast, drink coffee, eat cheese, nuts, and have issues on top of it all. Two pounds of meat. Well, this girl says to eat two pounds of meat or eat as much meat as you need to. Oh, just develop uric acid issues, gout, you know, purines and your, your uh, uh, uric acid yeah, protein byproducts in your kidneys. Ugh, I can't with some of the advice. I'm very conservative. Everybody knows I'm pretty strict because I don't like to hurt people. Hurt people. Hurt people. Love from India. Ah, uh, Ramha. It's too bad I never made it to India, right? The world has gone to hell in a handbag. Y'all know I ain't getting no freaking sword in my on my shoulders ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever. People get so, um, was it triggered when I ask if they've had a sword? But anyway. Thomas not on pets. What? Oh. I won't say his whole name. I ain't trying to, the guy seems like a nice dude, but yo, bro. I know Ramha. I know that one day I've wanted to go to India forever. Somebody told me, don't go to India. I go, stop. The Indian culture, the true Indian culture, the ancient Indian culture, Mm. and Chinese culture from way back in the day. Amazing. Hot stuff has to be good for something. Um, probably vasodilator, but no, it's concentrated. Uh, who's XO? Hi, <laughs> who are you again? I like to call this word candy as they took the candy. Why would you call it candy? Unless candy is bad. No, I say sword. I say friggin' poison beyond measure. I've been getting really upset, you guys, my last consultation because except for Scott, I think. I don't know. I didn't ask Scott. 
No, he didn't. So many people are eating candy. And it's really upsetting me. Like a stranger offering candy to the unsuspecting. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll probably move back to Texas soon where I can live and work. Yes. You know what? I'm so glad I left California. You guys know. In my old videos, I was like, I'm a Cali girl. You know? They were like, East Coast girls are hip. They really want to know the na-na-na. But I can't wait to get back to the state, to the to the what a beautiful, what the most beautiful girls in the world. I wish they all could be California. Ah, uh, that was me. Well, it's just it breaks my heart that I had to leave my favorite place in the world. They have to support the stock market, you know. Oh uh, yeah. So hold on, I'm not eating candy here, Marianne's. I'm not eating candy. When I get my consultations, like I had a consultation with a woman. She had, um, wait, she had, oh, what she have? She, um, come on, step. Oh, she had, uh, she had cancer of the pancreas. This is why it's very important, you guys, support your jibba jab. <laughs> jibba jabby. I'll say jibby jab. That's a good one, right? I say sword. It's like everything off the algorithm as much as possible. I can't handle most corn. Are you being literal or are you being ironic? Uh, candy free here. Candy free in Texas. No, there's a lot of people eating candy in Texas. A lot of people eating candy. And I... I, I, I ask every single person, do you know what they make that candy out of? Like, what's, what's inside the candy? Nobody ever does. And then when they guess, I'm like, no. What, what, what kind of research you be doing? What? No. No. Chica, please. <laughs> I'm so silly. Don't eat candy. So happy I left Toronto. People in Florida. Is that, that's gotta be Scott. Yeah. Or not, says, you know, despite their reputation. They're, not, they're a lot saner. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, today I went shopping, right? I went shopping and I just felt good. I was like, all right, some people have like a menstrual pad on their face with ear straps. That's fine. You know, it's chill. It's like, you want to wear a menstrual pad? Go ahead. But if you don't want to have a menstrual maxi pad, no, it's actually a mini pad, right? They look like pads to me. When I first started seeing them on the ground, I'm like, they look like, they look like menstrual pads, like the thin ones. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, Emma, stop. Thank you, darling. Emma is always so supportive of my channel. Thank you so much for donating to the super chat. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, he gave, he given the kids candy for show. My parents ate it. <laughs> my mom ate the candy too. <laughs> I'm like, I cried for two hours on the floor. I actually just freaked out because I got her not to eat candy for so long. And then she ate the candy. And, you know. It's almost like the bigger the L-I-E, the more people believe in candy. It's crazy. Like, the bigger the L-I-E, the more that, the, yeah. How does one contribute, Ron? Oh, um, oh, oh, Emma, how do you contribute to, you don't have to, but the super chat, I think it's, I think it's actually where you write in, on the side you can contribute to the super chat on the side of the chat where you type, I think. You, you've seen the new Candyman movie? <laughs> the Candyman can. Uh, it's gross breathing in your own, yeah, uh, what? Uh, fungus and yeast particles and all kind of stuff. A lot of family has. I cried so much after. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you, Terry. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, donation to the super chat. You know, sometimes I get off topic, you guys. I get tired of talking about freaking keto all day long. I like to talk about life, but like pe people instantly leave my live streams when I start talking about life. And I don't know why. It's interesting to talk about life. You know, I like to, I, sometimes I did like stuff stories because you guys know I've traveled all over the world. Stuff's got some crazy stories. Uh, there's a, um, there is a little S in the 
Bottom. Oh, there's an S. Is it an S? I think it's a money symbol. I'm not really sure, but what's wrong with sour cream? Um, sour cream has too many carbohydrates in it. Yes. Please sell an argument and tell my 20 year old that you are not in your early thirties. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. You're not in your early thirties. She doesn't believe me. I mean, you do look amazing. So I understand. Hello. I am not in my early thirties. I am not in my twenties. I am not in my forties. I'm in my fifties as in 54. Yep. And abs and everything. Hormones, right? A lot of people ask me like if I ever would go off of this diet and I'm like, well, why would I, I actually can see the change in my body from 40, you know, the next live stream, I'm going to actually pull up my Instagram so you can see some before and after pictures because that's where I've posted them. Thank you verse. Thank you for donating to super chat. I've aged in the reverse. Um, I wish I could show you my Instagram because I was showing one of my clients today that, uh, when I was in my thirties, I was about nine or 10% body fat uh, my arms were the size. This is how big my arms were. Uh, you really saw really good ab, uh, abdominal development and, um, my shoulders were really, really cut, but I had no boobs, no butt. And I looked very gaunt in my face and, um, it aged me a lot when I was in my thirties. So in some ways, not all, but in some ways I look younger now in my fifties than when I was in my thirties, for sure. Please settle the debate on high fat or high protein. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've settled it so many times. Oh, I got to drink some water. I'm feeling dehydrated. Anybody who tells you to eat high protein is a knucklehead. Okay. Because people, number one, have problems with protease enzyme in their hydrochloric acid in their stomach. They don't produce enough. They don't produce enough HCL. They don't produce enough stomach acid. They have hypochlorhydria. They can't even start breaking down the protein in the first phase of, of digestion. Then people have junked up livers. They have too much estrogen in the liver. They can't poop, right? Because estrogen is going to help you make estradiol. You become very estrogen overload. That really slows down the liver. Uh, people start to eat oxalates and also start to have problems with stones developing the biliary duct system, including their liver and their kidneys. And if people are not considering the fact that if your liver is not functioning properly, which most of you guys aren't having high liver, uh, liver function, especially those who live like very stressful lives and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then there, the liver, the kidney function always becomes compromised when the liver is not functioning optimally. And so then people are trying to stuff a lot of protein. Protein has to be digested and then it has to go through the tubes of these organs and byproducts of protein get stuck in the tubes. And that's why people start to have low functioning kidney. That's why people got kidney disease, can't eat a lot of protein. Then there are people who can't break down uric acid and then they start developing inflammation of the foot, sometimes of the arm and stuff called gout. It's just stupid because what you cannot use, break down, chew, swallow, digest, gets reconverted back into glucose. And people who've got high blood sugar continue with high blood sugar on a lot of protein. I mean, I can just keep going on and on and on and on, but that's the, the quick of it. Please do a post on gallbladder cleansing and rejuvenating. Okay. I will do that. I will definitely do that. Um, I have, uh, three C sections and can you get abs after that? I really, okay. So this comes down to the anterior posterior and anterior pelvic tilt of, hold on a second. Let me stand up here with my PJs on peoples. Okay. Let's get this cracking. So this is a wait, posterior pelvic tilt anterior pelvic tilt if you're trying to do an ab crunch with an anterior pelvic tilt you cannot develop the lower abdominals you can't get that down here 
when you're walking around like this. Okay. And that is the reason why people have to have a straight. You got to play with your hips this way. No nope. anterior posterior. You want it like that right there in the middle. Then now you can access those lower abdominals when you're bringing up your legs to your chest. That's the quick of it. I can go to the gym and show you guys, but I'm in my RV right now. I have, okay, so yes, you can. You get a breakthrough. I would massage the scar, the C-section is, first of all. That's very, very important. All right, guys, I've almost gone, gone one hour. Wait, did you ever have osteoarthritis? Yes, in my, in my knee. I have osteoarthritis right now. In your knee injuries, yes. You guys know I've had 10 surgeries on my left knee. I have a uh, pigment missing on my knee. I'll show you from taking cortisone shots, which I'll never do again. But you can see the scar. Make sure my knee ain't ashy. I don't want no ashy knee in the camera. Okay, hold on. Hold on, guys. Okay. See that? See that white spot there? That is from um, cortisone shot. That. It took away the pigment on my knee. But you can see the scar, right? You can see the bulb-shaped knee. That's all uh, calcium. Um, uh, Tissue, tissue that's calcified, the blood that calcified. So you guys know I had 10 knee surgeries on my left knee. And I cannot run, jump, squat, or run out of a burning building unless I'm going to have severe issues. Okay, let's get back here. Um, do you ever have, do you have pain? Yes. Uh, I did hyaluronic knee injections. Game changer. Hyaluronic acid is what our body makes. And they've got hyaluronic acid and they made in a lab and they inject it into your knee and it's sort of like a gel and my orthopedic doctor wasn't sure he said it worked really good on ankles he wasn't sure if it worked on knees both knees are feeling great but i still feel pain have a great weekend scott i emailed you back by the way um do you take hyaluronic supplements every day no i don't i just got injections in the knee all right guys it is still in the 80s in this RV at night. Oh, knee replacements are garbage. There's nothing better than what God gave us. There's nothing better than what Mother Earth, Mother Nature gave us. If I were to ride thunder and fall off with a knee replacement, I'd break the, the, the fake joint into 20,000 little pieces. Or if I go skateboarding and I land on my knee, my knee can still take that much force and pressure on it without breaking. It'll swell up. It'll hurt like a biatch. But if I have synthetic plastic and metal, it's going to fall apart. And then I'm going to destroy because they spike. They take a spike and they pound it into your bone. And if you fall and it goes like this, you can't spike, keep spiking that bone. Knee replacements are for people who are like old and who are just going to walk. Not people like me who ride horses 100 miles an hour, skateboard, jump out of planes, whatever. Meniscus tear can heal itself. No. Hmm. If you have a tear, uh-uh. You fracked up. You got a tear. Okay, guys, I got to go. Thank you so much for today's live stream. It is time to go and say hello to Thunder, my fur baby husband, child, and then my little child, Luca. Uh, where do I store avocados? You can put them, if they're hard green, put them in a paper bag with a banana, ripen them. And if they're getting mushy, put them in the refrigerator on the bottom shelf. Those replacement x-rays look scary like the teeth of veneers. <laughs> right? The x-rays for the replacement knee. I, I I don't want that. I'll just I'll just take what my mama and my daddy gave me and I'll just keep my own natural material until the six million dollar man bionic material comes in and is, you know, maybe the stem cell, you know, all of that stuff. Can come into play so i want to say thank you to everyone for the uh donation to the super chat i need to relax i'm so exhausted you guys hear it in my voice 
I'm not hypoglycemic on my body's just like, ugh, girl, take a break. And I can't because I got to go out and say hello to my fur babies. Great life. Thank you, Emma, by the way, for the donation to the super chat. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful, wonderful, because you're in the UK. Emma, you're supposed to be in bed, right? Isn't it like four in the morning? I think Emma's in the UK. Emma, it's crazy going down in England, right? England, Germany, oh, thank God for Texas and the South. Yeah, even Tennessee is pretty chilling. All right, guys, thank you. We think you're awesome. Thank you, Annie. I appreciate it. I know my older videos, I'd be like, what you talking about? Okay, let me take off my earrings. All right, we're going to come at it like right now. But once I stop kind of following what other people are doing or the gossip in the whole low carb world, then I start to be like a better person. I, I say 2 a.m. Exactly, Emma. You need to get some sleep. Relax. Don't let my annoying voice <laughs> burn your ear off. All right, guys. Thank you for everything. And I will be back. Thank you. God bless you too, honey. Yes, you look gorgeous when all the natural, a uh, natural to rest up queen. Thank you. Uh, you rock. Yes, I feel good. I feel good. -na 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 -na. Right, I'm from LA. I was living in Hollywood, Hollywood City to the friggin' country. It is quite interesting. All right, guys. Peace. Consultation, stephanieperson.com. My Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook is Stephanie the Business Person. And I got some energy. And I'm out. Peace, guys.